Hey, aloha, Mark J. for Thoughtful Thursday with you. And uh, I've made some outlandish promises in the last few Thursdays, uh, particularly telling you that people know more about their cell phone than their brain. And thanks. And thanks for the comments and saying, well, how does the brain work? And uh, so we're going to get into that in these next three thoughtful Thursdays because I don't want to hit you with a fire hose. So let's start off with how the mind operates. Uh, your mind basically has four parts to your brain. Uh, and think of it this way. It's a great metaphor for you. There's four parts to an orchestra. Okay. And the orchestra has strings and percussion and uh, uh, we, uh, what did I say, strings, percussion, uh, woodwinds, and brass, okay? And oddly enough, it matches up with the four colors, yellow, red, uh, blue, you can think of the blues as the strings, and of course, the yellows are the brass, having fun, and the whites, they're the woodwinds, you know, that, especially the double reed, and of course, the reds, they're the percussion, boom, boom, let's go, okay? So, You've uh, been a lazy networker, colorcode.com. You've got your color. You've started to ask yourself a couple of questions all day long. What am I pretending not to know? And what would the person I intend to become do next? And all of that was designed to help you start to think a little bit differently. Like maybe inside me, maybe this guy is right. And all I have to do is learn to control my thinking. And the reality is that's all you can control. The unhappiest people on the planet are the ones that are trying to control everything around them. I've certainly been there in my life. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. It doesn't work because I know this, okay? I know how great the world would be if everybody would just do what I told them to do. Okay? <laughs> They're never gonna, okay? <laughs> They're just not. And that doesn't matter. What matters is that you do what your heart's desire has been whispering to you. And I hope through some of these thoughtful Thursdays, you're starting to think maybe, maybe there's some value to what Buddha said. Maybe there's some value to what Jesus said. Maybe there's some value to what Socrates and Plato and Aristotle and Nietzsche uh, said. You know, the great Nietzsche, uh, uh, he's one of my favorites. What Nietzsche talked about was that when you step away from the crowd and stop being a sheeple, when you step away, sometimes you'll feel lonely and sometimes you'll be afraid, but there is no price too high for owning yourself. And that's really what this series is all about, is discovering who you really are and letting your light shine. What did the master teacher teach? He said, you are the light of the world. He didn't say you'd be the light of the world when you did these 18 things and you wrote a best-selling book and you were top pin level or achievement level or double vice president uh, supreme at your company or whatever it happens to be. It's all nonsense and it's not good for you. It's people and institutions trying to make us believe that our role performance somehow has anything to do with who we are. So we've been over that, good quick mini review. The question becomes, when you start asking yourself all day long, what would the person I intend to become do next? Obviously start to develop in your mind who that person is. The second thing is, is you've got to start to use your brain. As soon as you stop thinking that paying somebody $12,000 and screaming all weekend and then walking across hot coals is going to change your life. You know, I'm sure you're past that nonsense uh, because you're still here listening to me, okay? That stuff isn't going to make any difference because it's all external. What's inside you is the most magnificent mechanism on the planet and everything mankind has created was German, first began as an idea that germinated in a mind. Does that make sense? Great. So, there's seven laws that run this thing, and they all lead to one law in particular. So we're gonna go over a couple of laws in each one of these uh, thoughtful Thursdays to give you something to work on. 
And I always put the law of forgiveness first. Okay, six laws all are designed to help you understand the seventh law, which is the granddaddy of them all. But the law of forgiveness is really, really important because <clears throat> the logical side of you is the procurer. This would be sort of the mental gender uh, that we all have a masculine and feminine and the mental gender inside each of us, the logical is the protector of what comes into the subconscious mind. It goes out and gets the resources, basically the male. The feminine part of us, that's the part of us that connects to the divine. Okay, this is where the realm of divine ideas comes from. Every, this is something every metaphysical student knows, and now you do too. When we have a resentment, when we're angry, when we can't let something go, daddy didn't come to my baseball games, mommy showed up at my baseball games drunk, whatever. How old are you, 45, 50, 60? It's time to get over it, okay? And, and that means you've got to forgive it because when you have a resentment towards someone, it's like, a, it's like you have them in jail and it takes two to make a jail. The, the prisoner and the jailer and you're just as linked to that situation as you could be and you're blocking the flow the realm of divine ideas so we'll just go into a little 30 second thing here right uh, I am now understanding that I am all light it runs through me there are no dark corners uh, I forgive everyone and everything for anything that's ever happened it is not important. What's only important is the only thing that can actually touch who I am is the presence of God. So these are all just perceptions in my mind that I haven't let go. And now I hand them over to a power greater than myself because I finally realize the only thing that can actually touch me is the presence of the Lord himself. And in doing so, I resurrect this dynamic person that's pure love, service, and harmony that I was always intended to be. Okay, we've forgiven everyone. That opens up the realm of uh, divine ideas to you. And this leads us to law number two of the seven laws of the mind. And it's just, we're just going to cover two per video here because I really want you to get these. The second law is the law of practice. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, 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 okay? Perfect practice prevents poor performance or persistent practice produces perfect presentations. Let me explain something to you before we go any further. Your subconscious mind runs 95 to 98% of the show. We've already been over this. If you haven't seen that yet, go back and watch some of the earlier videos. 95%. Now, here's what you need to know about the mind. The subconscious mind does not debate anything. It doesn't debate anything. What it believes is your voice. Let me say that again. Your subconscious mind has no defense against your voice. So that negative self-talk, she's got to go. Because all you really are is angry or hurt. And angry or hurt people hurt people. Well, we've already forgiven everybody and included in that was you. So now you need to practice. What do you need to practice? Positive self-talk to yourself. I'm a 10. Now, when we ask people to write down what their score is on a scale from one to 10, the average is seven. And what they're doing is they're taking their role performance and they're averaging it out and they average it out and they come out as a seven. And what this means is when you go out and have a couple of days that are 10, you're gonna self-destruct to bring yourself down to a seven because that's your perception. You're a 10, made first class, by first class. Start living up to it, okay? Start living up to it. And the way that you do that is practice. Number one practice of all highly successful people I'm not talking about the loud mouse on the internet with selling secrets so you can get rich and all that. 
all that crap and the fake branding. I mean, there's actually courses out there that you can take now to learn how to brand yourself as an expert. Here's how you brand yourself as an expert. Just become an expert at what you can do. Hey, stop lying, you know, stop buying people courses that tell you how to lie to yourself and lie to other people. Just become great at who you are. What you want to practice positive self-talk, you want to refrain because your subconscious mind has no defense against your voice. And here's a really easy one. I'm a 10. I'm a 10. I'm a 10. I'm a 10. Muhammad Ali. I am the greatest. You're the light of the world. Let it shine. Don't put it under a tree. But the practice that they all engage in is meditation. Now there's thousands of books on meditation, and while they all mean well, and I'm sure they do. They're really explaining their experience. This is all you have to know about it to get it started, is you want to sit absolutely still for 15 minutes. Remember, we only have control over one thing, our mind. And until you get your body uh, under control for 15 minutes, you'll never get your mind under control. Does that make sense? So the law of practice, you want to sit absolutely still. You get a niche on your nose and you're tempted to scratch it, don't. Okay, deal with it. Get yourself comfortable. Some people say lay down, some people sit erect, whatever. I think anyway with a spine is somewhat straight is the best possible situation. But it's a highly personal thing. It's more important that you remain absolutely still and become the observer of your own thoughts. Because when you do, you'll see they're all over the place. They're chaotic. The average person can't hold a thought for six seconds. You're going to practice seven seconds and eight seconds. And if you get to masterkeyexperience.com, we're going to give you four things to think about, one a week for four weeks, along with a mental diet to clear everything out. So we've forgiven everyone, and now we know the secret to using these seven laws of the mind is to practice them. And I'd like you to practice sharing this. I'd like you to practice leaving the comments. Practice hitting the bell. Peace be the journey. Practice, practice, practice. And you're going to love the scary part of what happens to you because you'll realize you can do anything you want to do. Peace be the journey.